Hey, good morning, family. I want to welcome you to our online worship experience. My name is Pastor Marce Winder. I am the senior pastor here at Branches of the Vine Community Church here in the great city of Hampton, Virginia. And we are so grateful. We are so blessed that you have joined us this morning for worship. You know, God has been so good to us. You know, I am excited, y'all, because I'm starting to see a little bit of uh, indication of seasons changing. You know, I'm excited because, uh, you know, it's starting to get a little bit warmer out there. I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to go outside again I'm not being, and not being freezing cold. But I'm just, God, I'm just over, I'm overjoyed this morning. Um, God has been good to us. You know, we are celebrating the last week of Black History Month. You know, as, as, as we are wrapping up our Black History Month, we are grateful for what God has done, you know, through through the achievements, through the triumph of, of black Americans uh, in the course of this, the history of this country. So I am grateful for it. And we just bless God. You know, it, this is a great time to be in the house. It's a great time to be in worship. And we're looking forward to what God is going to do today. You know, folks have sent in the scripture. They have sent in the prayer. Our praise and worship team is going to lead us in worship this morning. And then on top of it all, we have an amazing word for you. We are preaching from our current sermon series entitled The Waiting Room. And if you've been waiting, you know, you're, you're tired of waiting for God, for that uh, spouse. You're tired of waiting for God, uh, for COVID to get over. You're tired of waiting for God, for your healing, right? This, ser- this sermon series has something for you. It has something that's going to help you uh, during the process so that you can emerge victorious. We are studying the life of Joseph and just how God used him, how God worked in his life. So I am truly excited. Again, thank you for tuning in this morning. We're going to have an awesome time. And I want you to make sure that you comment. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share this video with somebody who needs to hear it because we are, the church has truly left the building and the church is coming directly to you. So God bless you again. Thanks for tuning in. Let's have an awesome time together. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning in good health. Bless the people that were affected by the winter storms in Texas and pr- protect the teachers and students that were that are going back to school soon. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, BBCC family. Today I'll be reading chapter Genesis chapter 39, uh, verses 6 through 10 and 19 and 20. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and because of him he had no concern about anything but the food he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, and after a time his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Fly with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, because of me my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is not greater in this house than I am nor has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her, to lie beside her or be with her. As soon as his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, this is the way your servant treated me. His anger was kindled, and Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in prison. The title of this song is, I Give You My Heart. I first heard this song when I was doing missions in Africa, and it blessed my spirit. It's such a personal song of worship. So we just invite you to sing this song to the Lord and just let him know that you give him your heart. This is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all I worship you. Oh, all I have within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in Give you my heart, I give you my 
everything right now. All I have within me. All I have within me. I give you praise. Come on, all that I adore. God, we worship you right now this place. We just lay every care, every burden at your feet. We give it all to you right now. Give you my heart. Give you my soul. Lord, everything that we have, we give it to you right now. Give you my heart. Give you my soul. Right now, Father, we give this declaration to you. Lord, I give you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you my soul. Father, I live. I live for you alone. Every breath. Every breath that I take. Every moment. Every moment I'm away. Yes, Lord. Lord, I give, give you. Lord, I give you my heart. Give you my I give soul. Give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take. Every moment. Every moment I'm away. Lord, have your Father, this is our prayer today. Lord, we make it personal. We lay it all on the line. Lord, I give you my heart. Amen. Hey, good morning again, family. Haven't we had an awesome time in worship so far today? It's just been so good to worship Jesus. It's been so refreshing, right, to cast our cares, our burdens, and to lift up his name. You know, God is such an amazing God, and he has been faithful throughout our lives. And I don't know about you, but in my life, he's been better to me than I deserve. And I'm just grateful for that. I'm grateful to be at a fellowship. And, you know, I miss 
you know, meet and greet. I miss going around and hugging folks, right? I, I miss all of the things that we used to be able to do together, fellowship meal on first Sunday, right? But I recognize that this is a season. And in the midst of the season, we are in a waiting room. And, and we're talking all about that this morning. Our sermon series is, in, is entitled The Waiting Room. And we've been talking about how God allowed Joseph to enter into the pit in spite of his dream. You know, and, and last week, you know, we talked all about being faithful. We talked all about the fact of, you know, God wants us to be faithful and, and he wants us to really uh, focus and, and not waste the time that we're waiting. But this morning, I want to talk a little bit about character. I want to talk a little bit about integrity because they are critical, right? God wants us to be people of integrity. He wants us to walk in holiness, right? And sometimes we are tempted, though. And we're going we're gonna to look into Joseph's temptation today. And we're going to look at how he maintained his character but in the midst of maintaining his character, it actually cost him something. And I want you to understand that being a person of character will cost you something. Being a person who walks in holiness, it will cost you something. But guess what? It's worth it. It is worth it. You know, so we're going to talk about that this morning. I'm excited. We're coming from the book of Genesis. It was read earlier, but we're going to read in, verse, in chapter 39, verses 6 through 10. And then we're going to pick up in verse 19 and 20 and look at Joseph's temptation, how he overcame that temptation, but what it truly cost him. But before we get started in the word this morning, I want to have a quick word of prayer. So let's bow together. We're going to pray and we're going to seek God's face together. Lord God, we thank you this morning, God, because you are good. We thank you this morning, God, because you are faithful. We thank you, God, that you have given us life. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. God, we worship you, we honor you, and we give you praise, Lord. Father, we pray now, Father, as we get ready to open up the word of God, we're asking, God, that you would feed our spirit. I'm asking, God, that you would allow us, Lord God, to be receptive to what you want to say. Lord God, I pray you would prepare our hearts. I pray, Father God, that we would not just be hearers, though. Let us not just say amen, God, and let us not just say that was good, but Lord, I pray that this week we apply this message to our lives. Next month, God, we apply the message. Lord, I pray that we are forever changed. And God, I pray this morning, God, that you would allow, anoint me to decrease so that you would increase, Lord God. We just want you to get the glory today from our lives. Father, we love you, we honor you, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we're talking today from the subject of the cost of character, the cost of character. Now, if you've ever been in a waiting room, if you've ever been waiting uh, for food, for example, and they're taking a really long time, some of us may be tempted to leave, aren't we? You know, you, if you, some of, everybody have sat, in, sat down in a restaurant before and they took too long to take your order, right? The waiter, you know, didn't even come and tell you, hey, I'll be with you in a minute. Many of us will get up and leave, won't we? You know, if, there, if we've been in a, in a certain spot before, sometimes we are tempted to do it ourselves, you know, there are times where we're on a long journey, for example, right? If you're on a long journey, you're like, man, this is taking forever. Fellas, I don't know about you, but me, I, I like to try to look for a shortcut. There's times where I'm driving and I'll time this, this route and I'll time this other route just to figure out which one is faster, right? Because we don't like to wait. But for all of us, right, we must recognize that the shortcut can be a difficult spot. You see, because we tell ourselves, I'm tired of waiting, this way is probably going to be faster, right? This way will, will probably be easier. And I remember one time before we had kids, and me and my wife, we were, I think we were taking a trip home from Maryland, you know, for the weekend or whatever. And we decided, you know, this was before GPS. And this was before we had, you know, smartphones and all that kind of stuff. All we had was that map, that big old map book. And we were driving back, and I think we met a run into traffic, or we're like, oh, I think. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, I think I know a faster way, right? And, and, and we saw off to the side some route, right? And in this route, we took it. And, and looking, it was, it was still daylight when we took the route, you know. And I'm mapping it out. I'm looking. I'm like, okay, we can go over here. And, and I take a shortcut, right? And we are out in the sticks, right? We're out in the boonies. You know, parts of Virginia that, that just have little small signs and dirt, gravel roads. So we decide to take a shortcut. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm navigating. I'm like, we're we going to be just fine, right? And we start to drive through. And, and next thing I know, uh, we, we come up and, and the road runs out and the place we're supposed to take, y'all know in a horror movie you look and, and it looks like somebody's messed with the sign, right? We look at the, at the sign, it looks like the sign had been turned and I'm looking at the map and I'm like, we should go that way. But, you know, my, this is Black History Month, so my blackness is telling me, bro, don't do that because in the movies, when you, when you go that route, you don't come out. 
right? But record, we, we looked at it and we're like, okay, I'm saying we got to take this route. So we go, right? And it's a dirt gravel, it's a gravel road. And next thing I know, I get to a certain area of the road and it's water uh, in the road. It's a little dip. And I'm like, oh man, this has just got horror movie written all over it. And so I'm going that way and, and, and we're driving through this low spot that's full of water. I'm like, Lord Jesus, please don't let this car cut off. Don't let it flood out in the midst of this road where I, you know, I have no idea where I'm at. The, the, the road sign has been turned. Somebody's going to take me out. You know, I'm looking and I'm nervous, right? But we made it through that spot and then we're driving. And next thing I know, I'm like, I don't know where I'm at. So I'm looking, and, and, and in the midst of all of this, it starts to get dark, y'all. And, and I'm like, God, what are we going to do? I'm praying. My wife's over there. She's fretting and, cra- and you know, losing it. And I'm just trying to keep my cool. But on the inside, I'm freaking out, right? And finally, by the grace of God, we finally see a sign that says I-95, right? In the midst of, of the moon, you know, popping out in the midst of darkness, in the midst of all of that, uh, just being afraid and worried about what could happen if we got stranded out there, God made a way. I say all of that because shortcuts, right, don't always pay off. They don't always pay off. And, and, and I was looking, I'm like, man, on the map, it looked real good. You know, I can go that route, but when I got into it, it cost me. When I got into it, it freaked me out. When I got into it, it could have turned out bad. And we're going to look today at Joseph's life. And I want you to really grab hold of this because we are tempted to take shortcuts. We are tempted, right, to, to compromise. We are tempted to do it our own way, but it doesn't always pay off. So let me give you my bottom line, right? The bottom line is this. You see, because Joseph was tempted to take a shortcut. He was tempted to compromise his character. But the bottom line is this. Choose God's way no matter what it costs. Let me say that again to you. Choose God's way, no matter what it costs. And we're going to unpack these scriptures because choosing God's way, it cost Joseph something, right? In the season that he was in, it cost him something. But guess what? Ultimately, it paid off. And you and I must get to the place where we are choosing to not take the shortcut. We are choosing to be people of integrity. We are choosing to be men and women of holiness. We are choosing, right, to do things the right way, no matter what what it cost. Let's look at what, what the scriptures say. Again, we are in Genesis chapter 39, verses 6 through 10. And it says here, it says, so he left all that he had in Joseph's charge. And we're going to, if you remember from last Sunday, we ended on verse 6. So today we're picking up on verse 6. And it says, and because of him being Joseph, he had no concern about anything but the food he, that he ate. And it says, now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. Now, he was he was cursed with good looks. Yeah, fellas, y'all like, yep, that's me. Right? So, <laughs> fellas, you, you, yep, that's me. Your wife might think otherwise, right? But for the, for the time being, right, he was handsome in form and appearance. It says, and after a time, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, because of me, my master has no concern about anything in his house, and he has put everything that he has in my charge. So Joseph's, uh, uh, the Potiphar's wife, is trying to slide into Joseph's DMs, right? She's sending him messages and sending him pics and all this kind of stuff. And she's saying, come on over here. I got something for you. But, but Joseph is like, no, I can't do that, right? He, he says, he is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept anything from me except you because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And if, if we were in church and y'all had your handouts, I'd tell you to circle that. I'd tell you to write it down, to memorize it. He says, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? How would our lives look if we made that response to the temptations that we face? He says, and, and as she spoke to Joseph on the first day, right, she, she gave up and quit after he turned her down, didn't she? No, it says she spoke to Joseph day after day. She was worsome, y'all. She kept on coming. She was relentless in her pursuit of Joseph, right? He would not listen to her to lie beside her or to be with her. And Joseph's like, no, I can't come to hang out. I can't come to Netflix and chill. I can't come over there and do this great wickedness against God. I can't sin against him. And then fast forward, at this point, she's fabricated a lie, 
Right at this point, she's got some evidence, Joseph's clothes. And at this point, it says, as soon as his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him. So in other words, she has fabricated a lie, told on Joseph to, um, to Potiphar and got his clothes in her hand. Right. And that's some messed up stuff. He says, this is the way your servant treated me. His anger was kindled. So Potiphar is hot, y'all. Potiphar is steaming. Potiphar is ready to lose his mind up in here. Up in here. And, and he says, as and Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the, pr- the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in prison. So Joseph hadn't done anything wrong, has he? But he's been falsely accused and in prison. And it's not going too well for my brother, is it? Joseph started with a dream, <laughs> right? He ended up in a pit, he gets sold into slavery. He's faithful, right? He starts to get promoted. And as you look here, there had to be a time where Joseph started to feel a little bit better about the way things were going. He's like, man, I'm, I'm doing good. I got promoted on the job. I'm not making minimum wage no more. They got me a little supervisor position. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the manager now. I got it going on. He's like, I'm moving on up. But you must realize that examination comes with advancement. What do you mean, Pastor? And every time you're, ex- you're, you're uh, advanced, every time God favors you, examination will come, either on the front side or on the back side. But examination is the constant in this life. And, and you must recognize that you got promoted, right? Examination's coming. You must recognize that, you know, God's done something good in my life. Guess what? Examination is coming. You must recognize that I got a testimony. Guess what? Examination is coming. So every time God moves, recognize something, examination is coming. You see, the thing is that your faith will be tested. Let me say that again. Your faith will be tested, right? Your character will be tested. You're going to be testing on about whether or not you're going to click on the wrong thing. You're going to be testing on whether or not uh, the, 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 the lady flirting with you, right, is for you. You're going to be tested about taking money that doesn't belong to you. You are going to be tested. Your character, your faith, guess what? Your patience will be tested too, right? And the thing is, Satan will offer you a shortcut. Satan will offer you a shortcut. And just like, you know, I thought it was a real good idea to turn off and, 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 and cut through, right? I, I thought it was a really good idea. But then when I got into it, I, I, I was in too deep, y'all. And, and I, almost, <laughs> I almost didn't make it. But recognize something that the shortcut, Satan will offer you a shortcut. But the thing is, Joseph, let's examine what the shortcut that Joseph was offered. You see, as you really look at this thing, uh, Potiphar's wife came after Joseph. And as she's coming after him, I want you to put yourself in that story for a minute and, and, and just kind of visualize what's actually going on. You see, because Joseph was tempted to take Potiphar's wife, that was the proposition. But if you go into the room and, and, and you, you see she was coming day after day and she had to, this thing had to get better. It had to get more, the, the, the deal had to be sweetened over time. So in it, right, Joseph, I believe, was not just tempted to take Potiphar's wife. Joseph was also tempted to take Potiphar's house. And you must recognize that this lady's coming to him and she's like, you, you know you run everything around here, right? And, and you can come lie with me and we can go kill this dude, get him out of here. And guess what? You can run the show. And, and realize something, it wasn't just about the wife. And every time he came in Joseph's mind, right, he's probably like, man, I could take the wife, I could take the house, I can have all the riches. It could all be mine if I take this shortcut. And, and but you must realize, see, Joseph, he looked and he's like, this is not the way. This is not the way. And, and, and the man, Mandalorian's over here like, this is the way. Y'all know he says, but here he's like, this is not the way. Joseph recognized that this was not the way to go. So he had to choose something, y'all. And, and you and I, we've got to choose character no matter what the cost. We've got to choose character no matter how uncomfortable, no matter how much sacrifice, no matter what it costs, we must choose God's way. So Joseph, right, Joseph chooses integrity. He chose to honor God in this circumstance. He tells this lady, right, I can't lay with you. God has moved in my life. I've been, you know, I'm in charge of of my master's house. He's given me everything that I need, everything I could want. I'm grateful, and I I got access to everything except for you. 
So Joseph chose integrity. He chose to honor God. Remember what he said. He said, I can't sin against God with this great wickedness. You see, the thing is, Joseph, he recognized what was at stake. And many of us fail to realize what's at stake, don't we? Joseph recognized what was at stake. Some of us have have clicked on stuff not realizing what was at stake. Some of us have decided to flirt with our coworker not realizing what was at stake. Some of us have decided to steal not recognizing what was at stake, right? But Joseph recognizes what was at stake. And the thing that is that he didn't pursue the thing that was pursuing him. And so often the thing starts to pursue us, but we get in trouble when we turn around and start to pursue it. And you must realize that Joseph tried to stop it dead in his tracks. See, what did Joseph do? Now, let's dig into this for a second. Joseph exposed the temptation instead of entertaining it. You see, he calls it for what it is. And, and you must realize that when um, you get that message on your, on your, your, your Facebook page, when, when, the, when the message comes in your DMs, right, you must expose it for what it is. Joseph says, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And sometimes we, we, we have a habit of not really realizing what's going on, do we? When, when I decide to, to go and, and, and search for this thing on the Internet, when I decide to go and respond and start flirting with the girl at the counter, when I decide to go and take money that doesn't belong to me, right, I am not just taking a shortcut, but I am sinning against God. And Joseph, he called it for what it is. And we must identify it because you realize what Jesus did on the cross, right? He told the devil, he said, it is written. And you and I must get to the place where we expose it, right? But Joseph, right, Joseph responded to the temptation. So he called the wickedness what it was, but then he responded to it. How did he respond to this thing? The very first thing is that he resisted. He resisted. In James 4 and 7, it says, therefore, submit to God. He says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But wait, there's more. You must recognize that when we resist the devil, he will flee. But you also got to realize, guess what? He's coming back. You see, when Jesus was tempted, right, he withstood the temptation. And the Bible lets us know that the devil left him for a more opportune time. And as you look at what's going on in Joseph's life, see, Potiphar's wife didn't stop at just one pursuit, did she? It says that she came back day after day and finally right what Joseph did was he ran he literally ran out of his clothes because he's like look I'm not gonna lay with this lady she's got me trapped listen if it costs me everything I'm choosing God's way and he runs from the scenario he runs from the situation and sometimes we literally need to run from some of the sin that is attacking our lives we got to run y'all and recognize the thing right it says he is more crafty you know, I'm, we're going to dig into how this whole temptation unfolds in a minute. Y'all, y'all bear with me. It says he is more crafty, the, 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 the devil, he's more crafty. It says he operates with mighty powers. He knows the word of God, and he waits for a more opportune time. So he's waiting for when you're tired. He's waiting for when you're frustrated. He's waiting uh, for when you're lonely. He's waiting so he can come and tempt you in those times. And recognize in this moment, right, Joseph might have just got, got fussed out by Potiphar. Joseph might, might not have got his paycheck that week. And at that moment, right, Joseph might have been in a moment of weakness. But he's like, no, I've resisted. Now I got to run. But in all of it, right, he stood The test. And you and I must recognize and grab hold of character, holiness, and integrity as our priority. And he does all those things. And we we would think that he ought to be blessed now, right? We would think that he has chosen to obey God. And, and now, you know, Potiphar's wife ought to be exposed. Joseph ought to be promoted. We would think that's how it should work, wouldn't we? That's not how it worked out. You see, the thing is, Joseph lost his job, didn't we? I mean, Potiphar's like, no, nah, you, you out of here, bro. He lost his good name, right, because everybody believed Potiphar's wife. And on top of it, he lost his freedom. He lost everything by trying to do the right thing. Right. And I've learned this. My pastor used to teach me in college. He said, whatever you compromise to gain, you will ultimately lose. Right. So when we compromise to gain approval, when we compromise to gain uh, a companionship. We compromise in our relationships. We compromise in our money. The thing that we gain in the short term, we will ultimately lose. And the thing is, in Joseph's life, sometimes we do everything right and we still lose. But as we go through this series, 
recognizing that we can't take the shortcut, right, recognizing that we can't compromise our character, even though we lose in the short term, even though they broke up with us because we wouldn't lie down with them, even though they stopped calling because we told them, look, I can't go there in this relationship, even though people laughed at us and talked about us because we told them, I want to be a person of a character, we may lose their approval, we may lose something, we may even get fired from our jobs and rejected and persecuted, but ultimately we will win. And you must see this, right, because obedience is an investment. Obedience is an investment. First of all, it's a, an investment in your relationship with God. Joseph tells, uh, he tells uh, Potiphar's wife, I can't commit this wickedness against and sin against God, right? It's an investment in your relationship with God because, wow, we are all going to be tested, we are going to be tested. So it's a relationship in your, when you're, it's an investment in your relationship with God. It's an investment in your character. Character and integrity is what you do when nobody else is looking. And the thing is, you know, uh, my, my pastor, my spiritual father just passed away. And even to this day, right, there's still, there's no scandal coming out, right? You know, there, there's not all this stuff coming out because 40 plus years of being a pastor, the man walked in integrity. And that's one thing that inspires and motivates me because why? Character is what matters. My son's got a look at his daddy and I don't want him like, finding out he's got a, another brother that he never knew about. I don't want him to find out he's got another family that he never knew about, right? All of these secrets come out. Why? Because we chose to compromise our character, but we must decide to make the investment. But on top of it, right, when we are obedient, it is an investment in our future. And Joseph made an investment into his future, right? Because all of these tests, all, all of these trials, all of these setbacks that he's going through, by not taking a shortcut, ultimately, right, he was set up. And as you, in, the, in the weeks to come, we are going to see how God was working all of this out. But Joseph had to pass the test. He had to pass the test. But the thing is, many of us, right, we get impatient, don't we? This is why we take shortcuts. This is the reason we take shortcuts, because we get impatient. We're, we're like, I'm tired of waiting. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of waiting for a spouse. There's no good men out here, Pastor. There's no good women out here, Pastor. I'm tired of waiting to be promoted. You don't understand. I show, to work, I show up to work early, and people I train, they're getting promoted above me. You don't understand. I've been working on this job. I haven't got a raise in five years, and they put me on this project, and I got access to the money. Guess what? I'm going to get mine, right? We, we are tired of waiting to be recognized. I've been serving all of this time, and nobody tells me thank you. I come into the church early, and nobody tells me I appreciate you. They don't show me. They don't get me a card. Nobody gives me a gift card to, to show to love on me, and you know what? It's time. Time, my time is now. I'm tired of waiting. I'm, I'm, and this is what happens. We take shortcuts, and, and what happens is they lead to compromise. They lead to compromise. You, you don't understand, Pastor. You, you're not in my house. Where, where your, your wife ain't talking the way my wife is. And, and, and I got this other lady over here, um, and, and, and she, she listens to me. She understands me, right? I'm going to go and hang out with her this, this evening. You don't recognize that that compromise is going to cost you. The shortcut's not going to pay off. See, here's what happens, right? The devil knows what you like. Yeah, let, me, let me say that again. He knows everything you like because he's observative. Y'all ever recognize, you know, you, you might be talking or say, hey, um, I need an oil change. And, and next thing you know, on your feed, you start getting advertisements for Jiffy Lube. Um, you start getting advertisements for free oil change. You might, you might just say out of your mouth, you know what, I feel like some Chinese tonight. And next thing you know, you start getting pop-ups talking about Panda Express. You start getting pop-ups for everything and everywhere that you were thinking of because your phone was spying on you. It was listening to you, and it started to put into, into your subconscious the things that you like. You see, he recognizes, right, your physical desires. He knows your type. He knows what you like. He, he knows the kind of woman, the Coke bottle. He knows it all, right? He's been watching you for a very long time. He knows that you want to be recognized. He knows that we have a need for significance. And he will start to whisper in your ear, you know what? They listen. You know what? You ought to quit the job you have and go over here. Why? Because they're going to promote you. Even though, right, you got to do all these unethical things, recognize he knows that you want significance. He knows that you want stuff. And he's telling you, you know what? Just go ahead and take a little bit of money. They'll never see it. They'll never notice it, right? He knows what you like. He's smiling on you all the time. He's watching and observing. And here's, how, here's what happens to us, right? Our temptation leads to sin when these things happen. Let me break this down for you. First of all, we notice something. And there's no sin in noticing it, right, because we have eyes. And, and, and there are things that will come by and you are naturally going to gravitate to. Why? Because they are appealing to your physical, emotional desires, right? They are, they are appealing to your psychological desires. So the first thing is that you notice it. 
And when an advertisement comes by, right, I may start thinking, man, that, it sure would be good to get some Krispy Kreme donuts today. You know, they, they got the icing on it. And they got a special. They buy one, get one free. I notice it, right? But then the thing is we progress from noticing to then we start to negotiate. Right. And we start to negotiate. Well, you know, I've been good this week. I ran um, and, 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 you know, three donuts ain't that much. It's not that bad. I will exercise later. We do have a fast coming up next week. You know, it'll be church wide fast. So I can burn off the calories then. Right. So we start to negotiate with ourselves to justify doing the thing that we want to do. And there is this battle going on in our mind. There's a battle going on in our spirit. We noticed it, but the problem is we start to negotiate and we start to interact with it, right? And next thing we know, we're interacting with it. We're giving it time. We're giving it focus. We started to develop a plan. We've, we've turned down that street, and before we know it, right, we've navigated our way to the thing that's going to take us down. If you ever read David and Bathsheba's story, that is exactly what happened. David was on the rooftop. He noticed Bathsheba, right? He noticed her over there bathing. So then he starts to, to, to negotiate with himself. Should have been at war, but he negotiates with himself. You know what? That, that woman over there, she looks good. Y'all go get her. She nego- he negotiates, and he's, he started to justify in his own mind, right? And you and I, we do the same thing. We notice it. Right. The, the pop up comes up. We start to negotiate with ourselves. Oh, it's just I'm just going to look for a minute. Right. I'm just going to click on it for a second. It's not that big a deal. I'm just going to have a quick drink today. I've had a rough week, y'all. I need a drink right now. So as we start to negotiate with ourselves and then we navigate our way to the bar. We navigate our way to a site we shouldn't be in. We navigate our way to have a conversation with a person we shouldn't even be talking with in the first place. And then we find ourselves buried in sin. Right. You, you, you see the quick graphic and she's over here. Right. And she's like uh, mimosas. And then my man's like, treat yourself. Uh, leather and fine goods. Treat yourself. Uh, everything you want. Treat yourself. You deserve it. And that's what happens when we are enticed to take a shortcut. We're telling ourselves it's my turn now. Let me treat myself. I deserve it. We've, we've negotiated and now we start to pursue the thing that was pursuing us. And you must recognize something. When we do those things, right, our character is going to suffer. So as you look at this thing, right, don't stare too long. Right? Don't, don't, don't keep looking at the image. The image is going to come. You're going to notice it. Right? But don't stare because as soon as the more you stare, the more you negotiate. Don't decide, hey, they got free samples over there. Let me go and taste. Right? Back in the day you, you, before uh, COVID, you can go into Sam's Club and you could have a meal because you are sampling everything. But the thing is they want you to sample it because in sampling it, you will ultimately buy it. Stuff you didn't even have no business buying. It wasn't in your budget. You have no, you, you did not want chicken parmesan next week. Right? You don't need a, a bulk pack of it. But because you sampled it, you bought it. And recognize something. When we stare, when we sample, and when we, when we stay, we get into a whole lot of trouble. If you were to rewind some of the, some of the mistakes you have made, you will easily see, yep, that was me, Pastor. I stared too long. I sampled too long. I stayed too long. And next thing I know, I got a stronghold in my life. I'm addicted to this thing. And, and I'm fighting to get out of it. Why? Because I stared, I sampled, and I stayed. I like this meme. It says, when they look fine and good on paper, but don't have Christ in their life. Right? He's walking through. Right? And, and, and all, they, don't, they look real good, but he recognized they are not for the good. So he's like, ah, you got to go. You got to go. I cannot commit this wickedness and sin against God. I can't do it. As I get ready to close and take my seat, I want you to understand something. We can't be casual about integrity. And here's the quote. It says, free cheese is always available in mouse traps, right? Free cheese is always available in mouse traps. You know, it says here, it says, we must be intentional about integrity. And that's why, you know, I walk with the Iron Man every day, you know, and, and we, I got prayer partners. I got people around me because I need to be intentional about being a man of character. I need to be intentional about it because if I'm not intentional, if I'm, if I'm casual, guess what? My guard is let down and somebody can walk right through. And you must recognize that we must be intentional about our integrity, right? If you know you struggle in an area, you've got to put up some, some walls there. If you recognize you got valuable goods in your house, you put an alarm system up, right? You put a camera system up. You deadbolt the doors, right? We must recognize that we must be intentional about things in our lives. You know, we got to have some security there, right? In my house, there's all sorts of security. I got protection. I got got locks. I got all sorts of stuff. Why? Because you're not just coming up in here. And you and I must recognize that our spirit must be guarded the same way. You know, my heart was broken when when I I read about a prominent leader, uh, a great apologist, you know, Ravi Zacharias. It broke my heart because this man had a faithful ministry for years and years. And after he's gone, it comes a light, right, that, that he's, he's been a, 
a predator, right? He, he's uh, got all these allegations against him. It broke my heart because I'm like, ah, that hurts the kingdom. That hurts his family. That hurts God. All of these things. Why? And I'm like, how did it happen that way? Because I know he didn't start out with that mindset. And, and it, it scares me to death because I'm like, God, I'm trying to walk this thing the right way. And, and, and he's like, listen. You got to recognize you are flesh. You got to recognize you have weaknesses. So you and I must, we can't be casual about it. We can't just say, I'm going to go to church every day. It's going to be, be all good. We must build intentionality. We must build security. We must build accountability. And accountability, and that's what we get messed up in church, y'all, because we, we don't want nobody telling us about ourselves. The moment you come telling me about myself, now, oh, you're judging me. Who do you think you are? But when we have relationship, if you knew I was about to walk off a cliff, and you walk, and I said, well, I would tell him he's about to walk off the cliff, but I, I don't want to offend him. I, I, I don't want him to, to be upset. You know, maybe it's not that bad. And I walk up the cliff, and I fall, and happen to survive. And you're like, yeah, I, I noticed why we was about to walk off of it. And, and, and I was started to say something, but, you know, I decided not to. I'd be like, dude, what, what are you doing? How would you let me hurt myself like that? But we must build accountability into our relationships. So we need intentionality. We need to build security, safeguard things, and we need to be accountable. I'm, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping here, right? We, I, I preach you happy, right? I preach you, it might not feel good, but it is good, right? Recognize, be intentional. So while you are in the waiting room, while you're in the waiting room, I'm, I'm going to give you this and I'm going to take my seat. Don't take shortcuts. Don't take shortcuts because a shortcut is not going to pay off in the end. It feels good right now, but it's, it's not going to pay off in the end. You and I, we must, we must choose character no matter what it costs us. Character costs Joseph a lot. It cost Joseph years of his life, probably the prime of his life. If you're a millennial right now, you're like, Pastor, you don't understand. I thought I'd be married by now. Listen, choose character no matter the cost, right? Don't compromise and get this guy over here. Don't compromise and get this girl over here because they're going to cause you a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. Don't compromise, right, in your finances. Don't compromise in your faith, right? You know, we must choose character no matter what it costs. I promise you that it will be worth the wait. It would be worth the wait. I'm so glad in my life that it, when I was in college, when I was in my early 20s, right, there were times I was tempted to do certain things. There were times I was tempted to go over here. There was times I was tempted, right, to go and compromise. But I'm, I'm glad that God had put people around me. I'm glad my daddy was praying for me. I'm glad my mama was praying for me. I'm glad there were people who cared enough about me to tell me when I was starting to veer off course. I am glad. Why? Because it was worth the wait. Joseph, if, if you, when, when we get to heaven and we get a chance to talk to him, he's going to say, you know what? The pit was worth the wait. The prison was worth the wait. Being accused, being falsely accused, being in prison, you know what? It was worth the wait because at the end of my life, I would, God used me to be a blessing. At the end of my life, God put me in a position to not just help my family, but to help a whole nation. Right? He put me in a position to be used, but it was worth the wait. But you and I, we must pass the test. And so as I close... We need to choose character. We, we need to avoid these shortcuts. God is calling us to choose character. I want to pray with you real quick. Maybe you've compromised so many times and you feel like damaged goods. And, and maybe you feel like, uh, Pastor, I'm impatient. I'm tired of waiting. You know, I've been waiting on God for a long time and he still is not here. He hasn't moved in my life and I need, his, I, I need him today. And you're saying, you know, I've made mistakes, I've, I've fallen short, I've gone places I shouldn't have gone, I've, I've done things I shouldn't have done, and I need a fresh start. I don't know Jesus, but I want to know him today. The good news is this, is that even though your sins are scarlet, even though people talking about you on social media, even though when you pass by, they whisper, right? He says that even though your sins are scarlet, he says, I will wash them whiter than snow. I'll make you holy. I'll make you pure. Why? Because his blood, his blood cleanses. His blood cleanses. The Bible lets us know that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive them and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every, every message you sent, every person you lied to, everything you stole, the, the people that you laid down with that, that, weren't, that you weren't married to, all the things you did that were wrong, he will cleanse you from that unrighteousness. And, and, and if you want that for yourself today, I want to just pray a prayer with you. If you don't know Jesus, it's a simple prayer, and it's just a prayer that invites him into our heart. So let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, and you just repeat after me. If that's you, you want a fresh start, you want to know Christ as your Lord and Savior, just repeat these words after me. It's very simple. It says, Lord, I am a sinner, and I need Jesus. I've messed up. I've missed the mark. But I need you today. I confess my sins, and I believe that you died for me. 
Father, come into my heart. Live on the inside of me. Help me to live a life that pleases you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I got some great news. If you, if you pray that prayer with me, they are having a party in heaven in your honor. Angels are rejoicing. Saints are rejoicing. And guess what? I'm rejoicing too. I'm excited. I'm, I'm so glad, so grateful that you made a decision for Jesus. That's the best decision that I ever made. And I'm so glad somebody cared enough, to me to tell, cared enough for me to tell me about Christ. And, and if you made, that, you made that commitment, you prayed that prayer, I want you to reach out to us. Send us a message. Or you can email us. You can send us a direct message and just send us your contact information. We are going to reach out to you. We're going to pray for you. We're going to give you the resources that you need. We're going to support you through this process so that you can build up. What did we talk about? We talked about being intentional. We talked about having security. We talked about having accountability. Building up those things in your life and your circle, we want to be that for you. We don't want you to walk this walk by yourself. You've got God the Father, and you've also got the local church. So reach out to us. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you so that you are allowed to be successful in this journey. My next uh, prayer is I, I want to pray for us just for God to, uh, to safeguard us, to, to give us the strength to choose character because character costs. It's not cheap. It's not easy, but it's worth it. And, and you're saying, Pastor, I, I, I feel weak in my, in my faith. I feel weak in my mindset. I feel weak. I don't have anybody around me. I don't have anybody praying with me. I, I don't have anybody that I can call when I'm struggling. You know, or, or I need to call, but I don't know how. I want to just pray for you real quick because God wants us to choose him. And there are times that we haven't, right? I know there have been times in my life where I didn't choose him. But I thank him that every day his mercies are new. I, I thank God. You know, scripture says that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. I thank God that every new day is a present, it's a gift. And, and God has given us an opportunity to repent, to be back on right standing with him. He has given us that privilege. And I want to pray with you today. Maybe you've taken too many shortcuts. Maybe you're on the verge of a shortcut right now. You know, maybe you're so tired of waiting. You're like, God, when I need my turn now. Maybe you just need some strength to be able to keep going forward. I want to pray with you today. Uh, let's pray together. Father, thank you so much, God, just for your hand upon us, Lord God. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, because we don't deserve any of it. God, we have come to church today to worship. We've come to church today uh, to lift up your name. We've come to church today to hear a word. But, God, today, Father, I pray for the person, Lord God, who's just tired of waiting. They're worn out, God, and they're, they're facing a difficult decision about compromising their character, about compromising their holiness. God, and they, just, they need help today, God, to, to, to choose what is right. So, Lord, I'm praying today, help us to pay that, to pay that cost, that we choose God no matter what the cost. Because today we want to invest in our relationship with you, God. So I pray for that person, Lord God, who's, who's, who's wavering between two opinions. Father, give them the strength, give them the courage. Allow them, God, to even speak to the temptation and call it the wickedness that it is. God, I pray for the person, Lord God, who's in the midst of it, who's made that compromise, taking that shortcut, and they feel like they can't get out. But, God, I pray right now, Lord, in the, in the spirit, in the power of the, of the Holy Spirit, that you would allow them to see, Lord God, the grace Allow them to see that the, the, the hand of the Lord is not slack. Allow them to see that your grace is sufficient. And, God, we come boldly before the throne of grace today, praying, God, for strength to walk in character, praying for strength to choose that which is right. God, we honor you this morning. We thank you this day, God, because you are a God. You, you, you even say that you are married to the backslider. So no matter where we find ourselves, God, today, we submit ourselves back to you. As we close this time, God, we are grateful. I pray you will seal this word in our hearts and our spirit. I pray we leave this time encouraged. I pray we leave this time strengthened. But, God, we know the test is coming. So allow us, God, to pass the test, to choose character, to pay the cost. Even, Lord God, if it costs jobs, if it costs approval of people, even if it costs relationships, God, help us to choose character. God, we want to please you today. But, Lord, help us to please you on Thursday. Help us to please you next week, next month, the rest of the year. Help us, God, to choose the right way. And when we don't, when we fail, when we fall short, we thank you that you are right there allowing us to run back to your arms. So, God, today we run back to your arms, repenting, recommitting ourselves in faith, and, Lord God, believing you, Lord God, that great things are to come. We love you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, thank you so much for listening to today's message, for tuning in to today's worship service. It has been such a blessing to be with you all today. It has been such a blessing to seek God's face, to worship, to hear the folks uh, praying and reading scripture. Uh, and, and I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I miss being together. 
But that time's coming again, right? But this is not the time to take shortcuts. This is not the time to compromise who we are. This is the time, right, to choose character, to choose integrity, to choose holiness, to choose to please God because it will be worth the wait. It will be worth the wait. So if you're struggling, I want you to reach out to us. If you need prayer, I want you to reach out to us. If you want to connect with one of our small groups, if you want to connect uh, in local Bible study, you want to connect in fellowship, right, whatever you need, the local church is here for that reason, for that purpose. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are here to be the church. The church has left the building. We will come right where you are. Even if it's virtually, we're here for you. So I want to pray that you have, I pray that you have a great week. I pray that your family is blessed. I pray that you are encouraged in your faith. I pray that, you know, that just God does great and mighty things. As we enter into the, mark, the, enter into the month of March, the third month of the year, right, don't lose your strength. Don't lose your hope. Don't lose your fire, right, because God's got great things in store. I can't wait to see you at small group this week. So BBCC family, go to small group this week. Those that show up, they grow up. Right. If you want to grow in your faith, show up to small group Bible study because we are making disciples. We're not just here to sit in pews and sit in seats. We are here to be the church. God bless you again. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I love you. Can't wait to see you again next week. Take care and God bless.